everyone, it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks. And today we are making this design here. So I'm going to show you how to create this gingham design in a little crochet tile. Now the thing is I have used this little example in my lavender pillow, the front we made in a previous video, so do go and have a look at that. But of course you can easily make this lavender pillar with just this design so you do it on both sides or of course the heart on both sides. I do however have in this video a hack for you to make the inside of your lavender pillar. So normally we do that by putting in some stuffing of course but the stuffing can easily poke through. So to save you from having to get out your sewing machine or your needle and your thread and lots of fabric, I have come up with a way of using a little bag, a linen bag, to put our stuffing in and to then fold it so that you can use this in your cushion. And it saves so much time, effort and in a way also money because yes, the bags will cost a little bit of money, but you don't have to get a sewing machine or fabric or spend your time making these bags. So let's get started. So what do you need? Obviously for this particular side I am using my three colours so blush, candy floss or hot pink. For this one here I used a crew, iris and lavender. They are all King Cole cotton soft and they are a 100% cotton yarn DK thickness and I am using a three and a half crochet hook for that. Of course you also need your scissors and a darning needle. So let's get started on the gingham side of our lavender pillow. So I'm going to make my slip knot and I'm going to chain 21. One, two, three, four, five. So here I have my chain of 21 chains. Now I'm going to do a turning chain. This does not count, but we do it to help us turn. And then I'm going to place a single crochet in the 21st chain. And I'm going to do another single crochet in the next chain. And another one in the next one. But this next one, we are going to change colour. So you do three single crochets, but then for the next three single crochets, you're going to use a different colour. So I am going to bring in my next colour to finish the last single crochet that we do of our A colour. So I'm bringing in the B colour and I pull it through. So this way, you will have three stitches completely done in your A colour and you are now ready to start doing your three stitches in your B colour. But you must also take along your A colour because we need it further along. So you go into the next stitch where you usually go into. Make sure you have your A colour lying along your chain. So you pick it up as well and you pull through the B colour and you do your single crochet in your B colour. Give it all a little bit of a tug so it's all yeah, tightened up into the next chain and you bring through your B colour to do your next stitch. There we go, next, yeah. But of course here I am now going to leave my B colour behind, take up my A colour, but 
remember you will need your b color along the line so you're going to have to lay it along your stitches finish this single crochet here and now we start doing our single crochets again in the a color taking along the b color as well So three stitches in the A color, not finishing the last one, but yeah, swapping colors. There we go. And we do three stitches with the B color. Oh, no. Yeah. Swapping colors. So changing colors on the last pull through is a really effective way to finish your stitch in the color that it needs to be, but already having your second color there for continuing on. So here we go. So on to the next color, onto color B, using color B again. There we go, and we do three stitches in the color B, taking color A along with us. Yep, and changing color again. And this time, yeah, look, we've done three stitches in the different colors and this time yes i've got three stitches left indeed and i am going to do them in the a color taking along the b color even though i am at the end of my row doing the last stitch of the row voila so this was row one. So now for row two, we're going to chain one and turn. And you are going to put the same colored stitches on top of each other. But you do have to take along your B color again, because otherwise it's not in the right place where you need to use it. So make sure you bring that up. Hold on to your A color, bring up your B color as well, go into the first stitch, making sure you've got your B color onto your hook as well, and do your single crochet. And the second one, and then you start the third one, but you finish it in the B color. Now you take along your A color while you do your three stitches in the B color. And change. And give it all a little bit of a tug so your stitches are nice and neat. Yeah, change. <laughs> of course, because we're only doing three stitches, it is a quick change each time. You're only ever doing two stitches. And then the third one. Yeah, we are already changing color. <laughs> I finished the stitch <laughs> never mind undo the last pull through and we finish the row with our three stitches in the a color taking along the b color of course 
Okay, so there we go. So we've done two rows of this configuration and we need to do three. So each color configuration will be made up of three rows of the same configuration. So for row three, we place three single crochets in the A color on top, of course, on the A color and then three in the B color on top of the B color. And that's how you continue your row. Okay, so I have slightly run ahead and done a few more rows here because I wanted to show you the colorway. So we start with A and B, A, B, A, B, A. Then we bring in, into the next three rows, we bring in the third color. So we use B, C, B, C, B, C. Then we go back to the first lot of colors, A, B, A, B, A, B, A. So now it is time again to do the second set of colors. So I have just finished here. So we cut off the A color and we are going to continue with the B color. So that means we are going to undo that last pull through there and we start using the B color. There we go. And so we do our first three stitches in the B color. So three single crochets. But of course, when we do the last single crochet, we are going to start using our C color. So I'm holding on to it at the back there, acting as if I'm already crocheting with it. There we go. I start using it. I'm pulling on my A color, laying it along the stitches there. And then I'm going to be starting to use my C color, just tugging everything a little bit so it all is nice and tight. There we go. So on to my third stitch and I'm going to swap colors just tighten up the colors there and I am changing colors. There we go. Oh, looks like I didn't take a long a strand here. Never mind. <laughs> I'm going to have to remember to put that on the inside of my lavender cushion then. <laughs> okay, there we go. And off we go. So once again, you do three stitches in the color, then you swap color and you take along the other color. And we do this for three rows. So these are the two color sets that we use. And if you keep on doing them, then you will eventually end up with the little pattern that we are making here. And of course, there's a certain amount of rows that have to be done to make sure that it's the same size as our heart panel that we made in the previous video. And so once these are the same, I will be back. So here I can show you. So we are going to be making three rows where we use the C color and then we have four rows where we use the A and B color. So once we've done all those rows, I will be back to show you how to put this together. Okay, let me show you the hack I came up with for stuffing my lavender pillow. Now, normally you would take your stuffing and you would put it into your pouch. But of course, crochet, there's little holes. So, you know, your stuffing could poke through. So, in a next video, 
actually I am using a piece of fabric that I fold around my stuffing and then I just fold it nicely and then put it in my pouch like that. Now I have to hope and pray of course that that's going to work because I haven't secured it. You could of course sew up that little pouch that you made with your fabric but again you need fabric, you need sewing skills or you even need a sewing machine. So when I went to my cupboard earlier to get my fabric out, I realised I had ordered these. Now, these are burlap drawstring bags and I bought them because I want to stamp on them. You know, I have some block stamps, so I wanted to stamp on them, make them look pretty and then use them as little gifts to give away or even just for myself to put something in, you know, make it pretty in your handbag. Um, I always like to put things in bags. So I thought, wait a minute. What if I put my stuffing in the bag and then somehow fold over the bag and put that inside? Because that would give me a much nicer finish. So I'm putting my stuffing in push it way down the base and make sure there's some stuffing in the corners. Okay, so I've done that. All right, there we go. Let me just push it down a little bit. Yeah, okay, there we are. So then if we then fold this over, maybe a little less, <laughs> if we fold this over, that will make a nice pillow. But of course, we've got this bit here. So if I fold this in, this part will follow as well. And look at this. And then you can stuff a bit your finger, go into it and put the stuffing a little bit more to the corners at the top and look at that perfect little pouch enclosed around the stuffing and it stays closed as well now you could sew this up but again there's no need so these bags i bought on amazon they are burlap bags 12 by 17 centimetres. And yes, indeed, I am not using them for the purpose that they were meant. But if you have no sewing machine, no fabric to use, then at least this way you can stuff your lavender pillows in a neat way. <music> So here we go. I have completed the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sets each time with two colors. And I am now ready to start the assembly of my lavender pillow. So I'm just going to cut off the yarn. Now I'm not going to cut off the A color because I'm going to use that for assembling. So I'm going to cut off the B color. And here I have the panel that I made in the previous video. So we are going to crochet these two together. Now you might think, look, they do look different in shape, but they are the same amount of stitches. So they are the same amount here as well as in the height. So let's see if we can do this. So I've got this one here. Which one? Because I had that little oops <laughs> uh, somewhere along here. So I'm going to make sure this is on the inside. So there we go. So this is on the outside. Then this one here as well. We've got a clear inside and this one is just a neater outside. So we'll use that on the outside. So we hold our two pieces together with the good sides on the outside. And as you can tell, I have not sewn in any ends. That's me. <laughs> so we're going to do a little chain. And this first stitch here is going to become my corner. 
and then I find a location there as well to go in come out and I do a single crochet and another one there we go so basically we're going to be putting three single crochets in the corner whichever location that might be so I am now just going to certainly here on the side just going to try and find sensible locations to go into and of course some of these will not be so easy to pick up as you can see but I'm just doing my best here yeah look I've picked up two strands here so one strand on this side one strand on the other side ideally I like to pick up two strands each time on each side so you know yeah well whatever whatever works here um i would just go for um not too far apart not too close together okay so let me just show you so this is what it looks like here and of course here you can't see the difference because you're using the same color so that's okay right so i'll meet you at the corner so i have made it at the corner and to be honest i'm going to just try and maybe just get into this first um, leftover chain here and then find the leftover chain yeah in in the corner there and just you know those are going to be my corners and I'm just going to place three single crochets in there. So just the first chains that were there. So now I'm going to go under the third strands that are left over of those chains that we did to get started. And of course, this is a lot easier than on the sides. So once again, in the corner, three single crochets on the sides pick up what you can but if you do have the stitches then at least you can pick those up so i will meet you when i have done three sides okay so i've made my little pouch when i got to the end here i used the first stitch for my corner so i did three single crochets in there all my ends are in there as well <laughs> and now yeah let's see if we can fit this in there and of course because we now have a nice pouch to put in there it makes it all a lot easier or maybe i should do it in the other direction yeah just see which one works out best i mean this is pure coincidence that this worked out the way it's it's doing with these little bags yeah and now push this in further close that up again yeah look see that's made it so much easier doing that that's okay now of course we have the tops here with the v's and of course that's so much easier uh, to close up so that's why i started where i did so we would have the two awkward sides and the side with the leftover chain done and now we have the nice side to do while of course we have the little stuffing in there and that's always the hardest part but at least here and now we are picking up fees and that will make it just that little bit easier what am i picking up on the other side there that's not the v there we go that's it <laughs> just making sure and yes of course you know now it's really awkward to hold see again i've done it yeah i'm going to have to put this down on the desk like so okay so this one and then i go over to the other side which one have i not used yeah there we go okay let me continue and i'll see you when i reach the end just doing my last stitch here and then I slip stitch underneath one of those stitches I did in the corner when we started. So we skip one under the next V and you do a slip stitch. There we go. So that closes the round. And we 
now have finished our little lavender pillow and look at that I love it it's really lovely there we go look at that and now all we need to do is I push in my hook make it come out near there and I loop around the yarn and I just pull it through there we go and then you cut this off So I do hope you enjoyed these tutorials. Thank you so very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!